cornstarch, ketchup, and paint. How are they similar? And how are they different when it comes to rheology? Welcome to part three of our video series on rheology. In part one, I reviewed some background information including a definition of rheology, the essential elements that affect how materials flow and deform, and the differences amongst materials and their rheological behavior. In part two, we discussed deformation forces, including tension, compression, torsion, and shear. Then we covered an in-depth understanding of viscosity as it relates to the deformation forces of shear, both shear stress and shear rate. In this video, part three, we're gonna review flow profiles and show you how these materials behave when we examine their viscosities under varying shear forces. By the end of that discussion, you'll have a clearer understanding of materials that demonstrate Newtonian, pseudoplastic, dilatant, and thixotropic flow behavior. So let's examine various types of fluids by grouping them into two basic flow profiles, Newtonian and non-Newtonian. Newtonian fluids are liquids whose viscosity does not change with a change in shear rate. Only a small group of fluids exhibit such constant viscosity, and a good example would be water. When we plot viscosity against shear rate, the rheology profile of water exhibits no change in viscosity with higher shear rates and no change when the shear rate is reduced or removed. However, with most liquids, the viscosity does change with shear rate and the flow of those liquids is called non-Newtonian fluids. There are three types, pseudoplastic, dilatant, and thixotropic. A good example of pseudoplastic flow is mayonnaise. Its viscosity will be reduced by applying shear stress such as vigorous mixing. Mayonnaise is a shear thinning material whose viscosity continuously drops with increasing shear rate and recovers along the same path when the shear rate is reduced. The question is, why would pseudoplastic materials become thinner with an increase in shear rate? Well, pseudoplastic systems contain polymers which at rest are coiled up due to stabilizing molecular forces. When you apply shear, through mixing or shaking, the polymer chains begin to untangle. With increased agitation, the polymers will align themselves in the direction of the flow and the internal resistance will decrease. Some non-Newtonian materials show the opposite profile, shear thickening, a viscosity rise with increasing shear rate, which also recovers along the same path when the shear rate is eliminated. This rheological phenomenon is known as dilatancy. While this profile may be somewhat counterintuitive, a good example would be quicksand. If you struggle to get out of quicksand, exerting high shear, the quicksand will instantly thicken up and restrain you. And if you stand still with just gravitational shear, you will slowly sink. The flow profile is called dilatant because the system increases in volume with increase in shear rate. They dilate, they expand. The system is usually made up of a high percentage of dispersed deflocculated particles. There is just enough of the continuous phase to allow the particles to move over one another at rest or with very little shear. After shaking or applying a strong shear, the particles become open packed and there is an increase in void volume between the particles along with air and space. As a result, the system starts to take on a strong, firm, paste-like structure. If you want to have some fun with dilatancy, purchase some cornstarch from your local grocery store and spoon mix into a disposable container one part of water and two parts of cornstarch. Keep mixing until you achieve a smooth, creamy blend. You will notice that if you mix slowly or apply low shear, 
you'll achieve a low buttery viscosity. However, if you try to mix rapidly or apply high shear, you'll definitely notice the shear thickening effect. The last rheological profile that we'll examine is thixotropy. Thixotropic fluids are similar to other shear dependent materials like pseudoplastics, but with one added variable. They are time dependent as well. Therefore, the viscosity is affected by both shear rate and the time it takes to recover. Ketchup is a good example of this flow behavior. You shake the bottle vigorously to pour the ketchup, but you only have a short time to deliver this condiment onto your food before it reaches its at-rest high viscosity. Many formulators of coatings and inks take advantage of this shear and time-dependent behavior as it contributes to multiple benefits. Recall that pseudoplastic materials will decrease in viscosity with increasing shear rate and recover along the same path when the force is removed. With thixotropic fluids, increasing the shear rate will also decrease the viscosity. However, reducing the shear rate will result in a slower path or a longer time to reform the structure and achieve full viscosity recovery. The difference between the downward and upward curves in thixotropic systems is known as the degree of hysteresis. Since products with higher molecular weight particles take longer to recover, their degree of hysteresis will be larger than systems with lower molecular weight particles. Now why should thixotropy be beneficial in areas like paints and coatings? Let me explain. At rest, when the shear rate is nil, for example, gravitational forces, stored paints and coatings will maintain the suspension of solid particles like pigments, extenders, and matting agents. When the paint is steered, the viscosity is reduced, which facilitates the achievement of a uniformly mixed formulation. Now when the paint is applied through brush, roller, or spray, the high shear rate significantly reduces the viscosity for effective spreading and coverage. When brushing stops, eliminating shear, the slow viscosity recovery permits sufficient time for the paint to flow and level, which diminishes brush marks. At rest, full viscosity is achieved and sagging of the paint particularly on vertical surfaces, is reduced. So while water, mayonnaise, cornstarch, ketchup, and paint are similar as fluids, you now understand how they behave differently when they flow under stress. As many of you are seeing this just before the holidays, I would like to take this opportunity to wish you, your family, and your business associates a very warm holiday season and the best for a healthy, happy, and prosperous 2016.